hello everyone and welcome to the channel so today in this video we are going to talk about the magnetic moment of coordination compound and we are going to solve few questions which were asked in CSIR net exam in previous like one or two years all right so like see magnetic moment of coordination compound is very important topic uh, from the coordination compound itself and like um, like if you if you see the question paper usually every year one or two questions of four marks has been asked from this topic so that's why i have taken this topic and i am trying to explain it in detail all right so just stick to the video watch it full and so that you will not like your four marks question would not be left out in the upcoming exam all right so before starting the topic i would like to tell you guys that i have started making videos for basics of organic chemistry if you are weak in organic chemistry if you want to build up your concept in organic chemistry or if you want to suggest some of your friends or juniors about organic chemistry concept you uh, then you can watch my videos on an academy there i have posted few courses which are uh, related to the very basics of organic chemistry from very general organic chemistry and those are going to help you for csr net exam as well because there you are going to understand how the how the uh, stability of carbocation is attained how uh, like different uh, effects uh, are being done all right like inductive effect electromagnetic effect resonance and all so the very basics of organic chemistry if you want to learn them then the link is given in the description you can click on the link uh, to follow me and like the courses are already available in the an academy all right so let's begin with the topic okay so when we talk about the magnetic moment of an uh, like when we uh, when we talk about that how to calculate the magnetic moment of complex then we have four different formulas all right so the first formula is for spin only magnetic moment where the effect like see first of all i would like to tell you a few, few very detailed and basic of the uh, like how the magnetic moment develops in a in an atom so if you have an atom like this this is the nucleus let's say this is the nucleus and the electron is revolving around this nucleus say this is the electron all right so electron will be having a spin motion all right so this is at, uh, due to this spin motion the electron will uh, rotate on its axis it will rotate on its own axis now electron will also have a orbital motion so it will be a orbital motion also so this orbital motion that means the electron is ro revolving around the nucleus also so electron is exhibiting two types of motion one is around its own axis and one is around this nucleus so the two motions can generate two electric fields which in turn uh, will generate the magnetic field and thus magnetic moment will be developed so this magnetic moment which is developed only because of the spin motion is called mu spin or magnetic moment or spin only magnetic moment now sometimes what happens that spin motion and orbital motion both together uh, give the magnetic moment of the like full uh, like the total magnetic moment of the compound or the electron is confined because of the spin and orbital both motions so that is called when the spin orbital coupling occurs so in that case we call that the spin orbital coupling has been done and there the orbital like the magnetic moment formula will change now then again there are few more uh, like heavier atoms like your lanthanides and actinides for them since they are heavier their electrons like the valence electrons are very far away from the nucleus so uh, for them uh, what happens the formula for the for calculating the uh, magnetic moment is is different all right so and then again there is some uh, more uh, like some more effects which cause few deviation from the normal spin only magnetic moment so we'll try to find out the formulas which are which are already derived and which you should learn uh, we should which you should keep in mind to solve questions and based on this formula and where to apply these things the basic things and most important thing is where to apply these formula so i am going to tell you that how to apply these formula where to apply them so that you won't get like you won't solve the questions wrong and at the end of the video i'll solve i'll solve the questions as well in uh, like i'll take the question directly from the examinations and i'll i'll try to solve it. so the first formula is for mu spin only so it is for just this the magnetic moment which is caused be, uh, just because of the spin of the electron so this is a spin only magnetic moment for uh, for this the formula is under root 4s s plus 1 where s is the spin quantum number or the spin of the electron all right so if you have two unpaired electrons for one unpaired electron the value of s is half for two it will be half plus half that will be one so value of s will be one so either you can use this formula or you can use this formula where n is the number of unpaired electrons so mu spin is equals to n n plus 2 where n is number of unpaired electrons so n is number of unpaired electrons all right and 
the next formula that is mu s plus l now this formula is for when spin orbital coupling occurs so when the spin orbital coupling occurs you have to use this formula uh, either you can use this you have to just uh, the spin only formula is there and you have just added this term that is l l plus 1 l is your as i told you that l was like for d or uh, d orbital the value of l was like this so plus 2 plus 1 0 minus 1 minus 2 so if your electron like you have to calculate uh, l l will be your sigma ml value all right so if you if you have one electron like this so the value of l will be plus 2 if you have two electrons like this and then your value of l will be 3 so like that you have to calculate the value of l now you can use this formula or this formula okay so just just i'm telling that what are these formulas then i'll tell you that they have to apply them now if the well if uh, one more formula is there that is mu is equals to now now when this formula is used all right so this is this is used when the spin orbital coupling occurs uh, now when the spin orbital will coupling will occur now this is very important question that when the spin orbital coupling will occur so for this you have to keep in mind that one t2g uh, orbital t2g orbital is uh, asymmetrically filled asymmetrically filled all right then only spin orbital coupling occurs or in it is it is in the case of octahedral complex now in tetrahedral complex when that t2 orbital is asymmetrically filled then uh, the spin orbital coupling will occur so this you have to keep in mind that when the spin orbital coupling will occur then t2g orbital or the t2 orbital will be asymmetrically filled all right now the third formula that is mu is equals to g under root j j plus 1 for here uh, this formula is used for heavier atoms this is used for heavier atoms mm, heavier atoms like f block elements all right so for f block elements this is this formula is used now what are the terms over here so uh, as you can see the j is the uh, uh, russell saunders uh, that spin orbital coupling value all right so uh, and what is the g here so g the value of g is given by so the i'm just writing the formula once again so it's g under root j j plus 1 where g g is given by g is equals to 1 plus s s plus 1 plus j j plus 1 minus l l plus 1 upon 2 j j plus 1. so these are the formula all right now see oh, how to calculate the value of j so j is equals to uh, l plus s okay if your orbital is uh, like more than half filled more than half filled if your orbital is less than half filled then you have to use l minus l if it is less than half filled okay so this these are the uh, the, uh, like the, like this you have to calculate the value of j the third the fourth and the last formula is mu effective is equals to mu spin 1 minus alpha lambda upon delta so just write it down once again so mu effective is equals to mu spin mu spin into 1 minus alpha lambda upon delta so this value this formula is used when there is a deviation from spin only magnetic moment now this happens in uh, like in the third row and the fourth row elements like uh, when you go in the like in the 3d elements not in 3d elements in 3d elements generally it is seen in copper complex copper 2 plus complex and when you go in 4d and 5d elements there you will see that the spin uh, only magnetic moment there is some deviation in the value of spin only magnetic moment and that deviation is given by this formula okay now what are the terms over here so the term lambda is spin orbit coupling constant and alpha is your constant for each energy term now see this formula is very important all right it's very very important because two times in csir they have asked direct question from this formula and I'll tell you that how to solve this question. So, so by now I, I hope that you have understood that what these formulas are and where you have to use them. I will 
uh, like I will repeat it once again in a very quick manner. So the first formula is used when there is only spin magnetic moment. You have to just calculate the spin magnet, uh, the magnetic moment due to the spin of the electron. Now the other one is when the spin orbital coupling occurs and when this will occur, when your T2G or T2 orbital is asymmetrically filled. Now uh, the third formula is for heavier atoms or for the lanthanides and actinides. Now the fourth formula is when uh, like it is generally seen in the 4D and 5D uh, transition metal series and it is happens when there is a certain deviation from the uh, spin only magnetic moment. So these are the formulas. Now let's try to find, let's try to calculate it by solving questions which are, which have came directly in the examination. Alright, so let's try to solve this question which was asked in CSIR June 2016 for 4 marks. The question says that the complex that shows orbital contribution to the magnetic moment. That means the spin orbital coupling way in which of the following the spin orbital coupling will be found. Now let's try to like like I told you that where it will be found where T2G orbital will be asymmetrically filled. Now let's let's uh, assign the electronic configuration to all of them. So for copper, uh, copper is like 4s1 uh, 3d10 but copper 2 plus will be your 3d9 complex. Alright, so this will be your 3d9 complex so if i fill it so it will be like 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 and 9 so it is your copper 2 plus complex now let's check out the other one that is nickel 2 plus so it will be 3d8 complex and it will be filled like this 1 2 3 4 5 6 sorry 1 2 oh, sorry for that so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and 8. So this is your uh, how the nickel will be filled. Now let's next is cobalt. So cobalt 2 plus is your um, 3D7 complex. So it's it's your 3D7 complex. So how the we will fill it? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and 7. Now the last one is chromium 2 plus. Now chromium 2 plus is your uh, 3d4 complex now 3d4 will be filled like this 1 2 3 and 4 now in all the four electronic configuration if you'll see that in which of the following the t2g orbital the below one is t2g and the above one is eg so in which of the following the e t2g orbital is asymmetrically filled so here it is completely filled here it is completely filled here it is also symmetrically filled but here it is asymmetrically filled all right so that's why CO complex will be the will show you the orbital contribution. So in this way the correct option for this question was option number 3. See how easy it was and it carries 4 marks. So it would, it would have given you 4 marks so easily. Okay. So let's move on to the next question. Okay. So the next question was asked in CSI June 2016. That is the same exam and it was asked for 4 marks as well. So the question says that the room temperature magnetic moment mu effective in bore magneton for a uh, monomeric co copper 2 complex is greater than 1.73 this may be explained using expression now uh, you have four different expression which we have already studied about now they are asking that which expression will dif uh, will explain this now for copper 2 complex cu2 plus complex if i make the like it is a d9 complex so if i fill the electrons like this so uh, it will be like 8 and 9. Now you have one unpaired electron. So mu spin will give you the value of under root n n plus 2 that will be under root 1 1 plus 2 that will be under root 3 and it will be 1.73. Now it tells that the vo the value is slightly greater than 1.73. So what will be the re reason for that? Now I told you while explaining that this formula in this uh, formula mu effective is greater than mu spin because of certain reasons and it is generally seen in 4D and 5D transition metal complexes and in 3D it is generally seen in copper complex so that's why like this is the only formula which tells now see here orbital coupling cannot happen so this formula is not valid for this now this is for lanthanides so this formula is not valid for this now and this formula is for a spin or only for the spin only you would have got this value only so these three are getting like eliminated so you have all left out with this option only and the other reason is that I have already explained that uh, when there is certain deviation from the spin only magnetic moment then we use this formula. So the correct option for this question will be option number 1.
all right so this was so easy question and when you student do, uh, did it wrong so like uh, so that you understand it well so that you won't do it wrong in the upcoming exam all right so let's move on to the next question okay so this question it was recently asked in csr december 2017 exam and it says that the following complex is the increasing order of magnetic moment and they are asking only about the spin only value is so you have four different complexes one is titanium 3 plus all right so you, if you calculate the oxidation number of air so it will be titanium 3 plus and now this is your cobalt uh, chromium 3 plus manganese 3 plus and co uh, cobalt 3 plus all right so we'll try to assign the uh, like make the electronic configuration of them now titanium plus 3 will be your d1 complex if you will fill this like this so you will be getting a uh, like electronic configuration like this so you have one unpaired electron so the value of uh, mu spin will be mu spin will be under root 1 1 plus 2 means n n plus 2 so uh, value of n is 1 so you will get under root 3 so let's leave it like that now next is your chromium plus 3 now chromium plus 3 is nothing but your uh, like say let's uh, it will be your d3 complex all right so it will be your d3 complex so d3 because chromium is like 4s1 3d5 now if you remove three electrons so it will be 4s0 and 3d3 so now three electrons will be filled like this and mu spin will be given like under root 3 and 3 plus 2 so 3 plus 2 is 5 5 3 is a 15 so you are getting under root 15 over here now let's next one is manganese plus 3 now manganese is your Magnus uh, plus 3 is your D4 complex. So D4 complex that means if you fill it like this 1, 2, 3 and 4. So alright so it's a refill again so it will be filled like this. So you have 4 unpaired electrons so mu spin will be under root. Uh, and you will have 4 and 4 plus 1. Okay so sorry n plus 2 so 4 plus 2. 4 plus 2 is 6 and 6 4 is under root 24 you are you bought for this now next one is your cobalt plus 3 so cobalt plus 3 is your d6 complex so d6 now for d6 the electronic configuration is 1 2 3 4 5 and 6 now you have 4 unpaired electrons so mu spin is under root 4 and 4 plus 2 so it will give you under root 24 now for these two the value of mu spin is same for other two it is less so uh, like c and d it will be slightly equal and it, they will be greater than these two so a will be least then comes the b and c and d have little like about to be equivalent value so that's why the correct option will be option number four all right so see how easy it was and it it carries four marks so it was asked in csr december 2017 exam we will take one more question at the end of this video. Okay, so let's take this last question. It was, uh, it was asked in CSIR June 2017 exam for 4 marks. The question says that a copper 2 complex having distorted octahedral geometry shows an absorption band at 625 nanometer. Given a spin orbital coupling of complex as minus 625 cm inverse, the mu effective in both magneton is. Now, as you have, uh, like, uh, we have done one more question similar to this. Uh, you can imagine that the value was like the value is not the spin only value you have been asked mu effective value so for this we have we will use mu effective is equals to mu spin into 1 minus alpha lambda upon delta where alpha is your spin orbit coupling constant oh sorry uh, lambda is your like uh, spin orbit coupling constant that uh, that is given over here and delta we have to calculate uh, which is given here that it gives absor absorption band as at 625 so from there you can calculate the value of lambda and L alpha we have to calculate and then after calculating this we have to calculate the overall value so let's start solving this so first of all we have to calculate the uh, value of delta so delta is nothing was but your crystal field stabilization energy so that is given in the value of centimeter inverse so in order to calculate that we have to take the inverse of this this wavelength all right so it will be 1 upon uh, 625 nanometer now it is in nanometer so you have to like see energy is inversely proportional to your like uh, that wavelength so that's why we have done this so we have to calculate uh, convert it into centimeter so it will be 1 upon 
625 into 10 to the power minus 7 uh, centimeter or it will be your 10 to the power 7 upon 625 centimeter inverse i'll just flip the page okay so we got the value of delta that is 10 to the power 7 upon 625 centimeter inverse now we have to calculate the other factors so for cu2 plus complex uh, since it is a d9 complex so first let's let's assign the electronic configuration of it so it will be like uh, 9 so it will be 8 and this is 9 so for 9 complex we have one unpaired electron and if you'll fill it like in the orbital so it will be like 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 and 9 so the value of l will be plus 2 for here plus 1 0 minus 1 and minus 2 so the value of l will be 2 all right because if you solve the value of l will come out to be 2 so the term for 0 is 1 2 for 0 you have s 1 you have p for 2 we have d so the term symbol if you calculate so you will get d here now here you have 2s plus 1 so the spin multiplicity if you calculate so the value of s will be half so 2 into 1 by 2 plus 1 will give you 2 so the term which you will get the term symbol for copper 2 plus complex you will get is 2d so for 2d complex the value of alpha is 2 all right so we'll put this for uh, value and lambda is given all already minus 625 um, centimeter okay so it was given in the question so we'll just put all these values uh, to find out the mu effective so mu effective is equals to one uh, now see now mu spin also we have to calculate uh, so i'll just calculate it here so mu spin is equals to under root n n plus 2 n is the number of unpaired electrons so we have one unpaired electron so we'll put one here so one one plus two will give you under root 3 that is 1.73 so mu effective is mu spin into 1 minus alpha lambda upon delta just put all the values here so the value of mu spin is 1.73 it is 1 minus the value of alpha is 2 and the value of lambda is minus 625 and the value of delta is 10 to the power 7 upon 625 so if you solve all these things you will get 2.732 1 minus minus it will become plus 2 into 625 into 625 upon 10 to the power 7 this 625 is gone upside now if you calculate all these things you will get 1.732 into 1 plus 0 0.0078 now on solving this you will get 1.732 into 1.078 on multiplying you will get 1.864 bore magneton so mu effective for this formula for this compound was 1.864 now your answer is quite similar with the option number 2 that's why the correct option for this question is option number 2 that is 1.81 bore magneton so in this way you have to for calculate the questions you have to solve the questions which are asked from magnetochemistry and see this is very important topic and like you should not miss this and if you have understood it well you can share your views in the comment section and if you like if you want to share it with your friends to share this video and thank you for watching and like one more thing i want to specify here that many of you which have not sub uh, subscribed the channel and if you haven't subscribed the channel you are watching this video and if you like the video please subscribe it because your subscription gave me motivation to make more good, uh, good videos all right so that's all for this all you can do is just give a subscription to me just subscribe the video that's all so thank you for watching i hope you like the video and i'll make few more good videos soon and like i'll make a like video on physical chemistry also so stay tuned and thank you for watching and don't forget to follow me on an academy also thank you